Hello friends. The preliminary examination is fast approaching and many have asked this doubt as to whether they are doing the correct thing, whether they have done the correct thing, whether they are going in the right direction, whether they would be able to clear this examination, whether they, they have to do more. If you think about it, these questions are bound to arise. So if you are dedicating a lot of time and effort and love towards something and you want that thing so desperately, these questions and anxieties are bound to arise. And if you think about it, I want to give example. See, that is the point. I can, I can say that these are bound to arise and just move away. But rather, uh, you should understand that everyone goes through this. But I am not a topper to give you the example of my own example. Rather, I would want to give the examples of people who are inspiration to me or people who I really looked up to. And these people helped me a lot through my preparation. So I thought I'll give examples of these people and uh, it'll, it'll all, I thought it will also be helpful for you. And the first person is Copper, uh, Copernicus. And uh, this person you would have heard in uh, many of the physics book. And uh, this person, if you think about it, was none other than he was the first person to give this theory that uh, Earth was not the center of this uh, world, rather Sun was the center of this uh, uh, world and uh, we Earth and other planets are moving around. If you think about it, this is a blasphemous statement. This is a dangerous statement because at that time uh, it was considered as Earth was the center and the Sun and everything was moving around because uh, in, in a sense it was, the, it was the will and wish of the religion at that time in medieval Europe which wanted uh, the hold on this all these theories for itself and when Copernicus gave a theory like that it was considered blasphemous and if you think about it the point was that he made this observation but he did not publish it you can think that he was he did not publish because he was scared he was scared of the church or he was scared of the religion but no he was not scared of the religion rather he was scared of himself that is the point you should know uh, he was scared in the sense, he, scared in what I mean is that he was not sure. He was not sure whether he did the correct thing. He was not sure whether he had done enough. He was not sure whether he, he in a sense, whether if he publishes, whether people would accept it. See, these are doubts Copernicus said. These are doubts everyone, see, now when you are going through this examination, you are having it. So, in, in a sense, what I am trying to say is that these the people who had changed the lives of everyone in this world right now also went through this uh, moment. And not only Copernicus, many other person are there. For example, uh, 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 Darwin is there. So, Darwin was a person, if you think about it, Darwin made a theory of uh, this natural selection and uh, this origin and evolution uh, long back. So, he, in a, 1835, he, he actually goes around the world and he uh, comes up with this theory at uh, 1835. But he does not publish this theory till 1859. Origin of Species, the book that uh, gives this whole theory of evolution and natural selection, the survival of the fittest and everything, it was published in 1859. But he completed his journey of the world and his, he came up with this theory in 1835. So all this here, he did not do that. See, he, he wanted to have more evidences. He wanted to do more things. He was not sure whether he had done the correct thing. He collected so much of information from friends. So many things he collected. And this is, this is, this is not only about the scientists. It's also about political leaders, you know. And there was uh, Martin Luther King Jr. You would have heard this person. He was uh, he spearheaded the, the movement of uh, uh, civil rights in USA in 1960s. Uh, if you think about it, he wanted so when people, uh, in a sense, he he was a person. He was into education. He was into uh, giving this. Uh, he was a pastor. Uh, he was into that. He was uh, he wanted to motivate people. He wanted to uh, spread the words of the God. But what happened was there was a movement and there was a bus strike. Uh, there was a uh, there was a bus strike, and immediately he was pushed into this movement of leading this uh, civil rights movement. He initially did not want. He initially thought he had given this some PhD or something and he wanted to do that. He was not, in a sense, he wanted liberation, civil rights, everything. But he was not sure whether he can lead. He was not sure whether he was prepared. 
he was not sure whether he can do justice for them and uh, if you think about it he has done that and uh, this is the if you if, if you uh, if you think about these examples we are also or you uh, right now going through preliminary examination you you are also preparing for this examination having all these doubts whether you have done the correct thing whether it is possible and if you look back the examples which i gave are examples where they themselves have had all these doubts and fears and anxieties before plunging into doing something which is great for this world but uh, but the point is that how do you correct it how do you correct or how uh, they corrected all these things in this i wanted to give an example of one of the favorite person uh, of my of my uh, rahul dravid so i want to give an example of how do you prepare for this see how uh, how one self uh, prepare uh, them himself or herself uh, to face all these things so i thought i will give an example of rahul dravid uh, rahul dravid if you think about it his career uh, is a extraordinary career and uh, if people who know cricket might know this he is one of the most uh, perfect batsman that is his game is one of the most perfect uh, thing in ever so if you have watched uh, rahul dravid play he will go by the textbook they will say that he is a textbook player that is whatever thing that has to be necessary for playing a, a cricket shot he will do that and if you think about it at one time in the 19 so he uh, when he came i remember when i i was a very young kid and uh, in a sense when i when he came in 1990s uh, so it was 1990s 1995 something uh, sachin tendulkar was at its peak so sachin tendulkar was the most so if you think about if you see many of the movies at that time many of the uh, uh, many of the what is that ads at that time sachin tendulkar would be the most prominent person but uh, uh, rahul dravid comes and he wants to establish himself but uh, the point is that he is not able to play this one day cricket he has this playing uh, capability of uh, uh, this immense capability of playing the correct shots but he was not prepared for this 50 over game he was not prepared for uh, smashing the ball all, all over the boundary uh, i remember a match where uh, the 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 whole thing the commentary everyone was laughing at him the laughing not only laughing they were making uh, they they said that he is not fit they said that he is not fit for this uh, uh, this whole cricket or they said that he is not fit for uh, one day cricket but i do thought that is the point i do thought that he was not prepared for this cricket uh, but what he did was he went back into the nets that is the point he went back into the nets he prepared himself he came back he came back two years later i remember the uh, remember a match where he hits the mutaya muralidharan i think uh, the highlights would be there i think he hits mutaya muralidharan over a long on you know uh, over the top of the bowler set it goes very deep so and he pulls off a, uh, uh, he pulls off a, a fast bowler sri lankan fast bowler in the leg side uh, with such such class and effort and one more thing he did Uh, in cricket there is a point so in textbook uh, cricketers would not play or uh, uh, in a sense they would not play uh, shots like reverse sweep because it is considered as they are they are not considered as uh, in a sense uh, proper cricketing shots but he did play that he did play reverse sweep see in the point is that you make fun of a person you say that that person is not fit for this uh, whole thing and that person what he does is that he does not go and say that okay these people are accusing me these people are making fun of me he went back into the nets and he came back and he proved them wrong but he did see this in a sense uh, you can say that this is one time thing but he it was not that uh in in his own own career if you think about it there was another moment where he was made the captain of the team and uh, people said that he was not aggressive enough he was not fit enough he cannot do all these things and hence it is not possible but you know what he proved them wrong as well and there was a moment where indian cricket so now cricketer dhoni is there for uh, wicket keeping uh, but uh, there was a moment in indian cricket where there was not a perfect keeper if the keeper was there he was not batting well so dhoni is a uh, find which was very important for indian cricket because he can bat and he can keep as well but at that uh, a particular time was there when uh, keeper was not perfect they could keep but they will not bat if they bat they will not keep 
at that time they asked uh, drahil ravid to step in and he did step in he was not a professional keeper but he did step in he did practice he did keeping for so many matches and he he was batting he was keeping he was doing so many, he was uh, being the captain he was doing so many things and when at the end of this journey what happened was uh, the t20 cricket came so it initially they said he was a test match cricketer then he, they said that he is not fit for 50 50 over and then what happened he proved them wrong then captain then all these uh, wicket keeping everything happened in his career and the last uh, phase of his career was t20 and uh, they said that ah okay he might have been a player for uh, this 50 over game but he is not fit for t20 t20 and all he cannot play but you know what he proved them wrong he proved them wrong he was he retired at the height of last ipl he played his team won he he was the captain of that team uh, i think rajasthan royals i'm not sure you can check it which team uh, but that the the team in which he led that team won and he played that tournament very well he smashed the ball everywhere in that t20 and that is how he retired that is the point he said that see so many people can come and tell you that this is not possible this will not happen or uh, so many see everyone has an opinion everyone has some opinion or the other they can come tell you whatever they want and whatever they feel but whether you feel that this is enough or you feel that you have not done enough you feel that you do not deserve it that is the whole point of this uh, this conversation about rahul dravid and uh, martin luther king uh, and copper nickers and uh, and uh, and the charles darwin so and if if you think about it and you might also see and finally i'll end with this uh, you might also think that see all these examples are nice they they have uh, me because they have all these talents and things like that and they they are well prepared for all these things they are they are geniuses but i would say see the point is that they are not geniuses they are ordinary men ordinary women who have made extraordinary efforts i lend with uh, martin luther king junior you would have heard this uh, dial uh, heard the speech you know the one of the greatest speech in the world it will be in youtube i have a dream this is a speech which actually united uh, the whole the civil rights movement the the, uh, the african american uh, blacks which were who were there who were oppressed and it was a very traumatic time at the 1960s and the usa went through a lot of turmoil and uh, the nation had to be uh, united and uh, martin luther king stood up to that point and he united uh, the whole uh, the whole people into one thing and that speech played a very important part in the history of the uh, civil rights movement and uh, that uh, speech is called as that i have a dream it is in youtube you can check it but if you look at it martin luther king did not write that speech till the day before in a sense he was supposed to give see i told you in the beginning itself he was reluctant he did not know whether he see he was ready for all these things whether he can pull off all these things whether he could see uniting all these people into one and leading a movement for civil rights it's not an easy thing you have to have that uh, thing and he had that uh, uh, good feeling for uniting people but he was having this doubt but in the this i have a dream speech he could not prepare same may see you and i everyone gets paralyzed you know so pre- preparing for civil services examination we get paralyzed sometime we get we think whether see i see i know for a fact you many have messaged me i am not able to sleep see i i for a fact no see i for a fact no uh, it's it's not very easy you know it's not very easy i can understand you and uh, see if you are not able to sleep martin luther king was see you are the same so you are facing the same thing as martin luther king junior the day before uh, the speech the day before he gave that uh, i have a dream speech he could not sleep till 3 am he was awake till 3 am he was preparing that speech till 3 am he was making changes to that speech he was see, see tomorrow is a very big day same as you are going to write preliminary examination which is going to be a very big day in your career same fears same fears see this fear is greater than that fear no same fear human beings have the same kind of feeling that we have for things we love 
things we want to do. You want to be a nation builder. You want to be doing something for this nation. You want to do something for your family. You want to do something for yourself. You'll feel that fear. You'll feel that fear that uh, Martin Luther King Jr. felt. It. And uh, he, in a sense, if you think about it, the great things about uh, these people is that they do not give, till the la- give up till the last moment. Till the last moment, they will not give up. They will be trying till the last. I'll give you an example. He did not finish that. Uh, uh, I have a dream speech in the morning three. So you, you, you have to sleep because next day is a big thing. And then next day he goes. He was stepping onto that stage. He was stepping onto that stage. And uh, while stepping onto the stage, one of the friend, one of the friend, when he was stepping onto the stage, she told him, uh, uh, Martin, tell them our dream. Tell them the dream of, uh, uh, the, tell them the dream that we have. And he steps onto the stage. He starts giving the speech. And that is where he says, I have a dream. And if you think about it, the I have a dream sentence. I have a dream about uniting this whole country, uh, the whole thing. That statement was not in the speech. That statement was given by the friend when he was stepping onto the podium. This is how people are. This is how they managed their fear, anxieties. They will not give up till the last moment. Till the last moment, they will imbibe everything that is going around. Till the last moment, they will try. Even if those nights are sleepless nights, even if those nights are fearful nights, even if those nights are anxiety-filled nights, they will keep trying. They will keep trying and they will have their dream come true. And as uh, Martin Luther King says, I have a dream or uh, and the same way you have a dream and I wish that dream comes true. All the best. And thank you.